Hi everyone and welcome back. So today we have teamed up with Sasha O'Hara to do another wonderful coloring tutorial. Today's coloring tutorial is coloring snow. Now, as we get into the winter months, we've all got tons and tons of holiday and Christmas and winter books that are going to have snow in them. And we want to know how to color it because leaving it white is just not that fun, nor is it actually very realistic. So we're going to get into a little bit of that today. Uh, don't mind me, I was over here coloring my mountain gold because I live in a fancy place. So one of the things to think about when you're coloring something that is clear or very reflective is that it's reflecting the colors that are around it. One of the things about snow is that it is highly reflective. The main thing it will be reflecting is the sun rays and the sky. So you've got different colors of yellows, um, blues, um, as far as shadows go, you can put in purples. These are all colder colors that are going to bring out the actual vibrancy of the snow itself. And you may not think about it, but when you start putting it down, it actually really makes sense. Over here, I've got some purples and some blues and a little bit of gray laid out as these shadows underneath my trees, which I think I'm going to make a little bit darker. And then over here, I'm starting to work in some more of the blues um, as the shadows for the actual snow itself. So here's some of the colors that I have. I have sky blue, and I'm working with polychromos uh, by Fabric Estelle, which are an oil-based uh, high-end color pencil. But honestly, any of these colors will work. I will have them all lifted, listed in the description for you, as well as where you can find this coloring page from Sasha O'Hara. So, we've got sky blue. I've also got light ultramarine. A personal favorite blue is the light cobalt turquoise. As uh, my purple that I have here is violet, just regular violet. And then I have a couple of different grays. These are all cold grays. Um, I've got one, two, three. I think I have four here too. Just in case I want to go over some of my other colors. I also have ivory and cream. Very, very light colors that will help us kind of show the reflection of sun's rays. Because you would think, put yellowing, you know, yellow like a cream on snow, yellow and snow. We don't really want to think about that, but it could happen. <laughs> also, anytime you've got snow near something else, like a purple mountain or a green tree or whatever, it's going to reflect some of that color too, and you can always throw that in there. So, I want to start with, I've got some of this. This is down here, the light cobalt turquoise in the corners and on the bottom of these little snow drifts that I've been working on. And I'm also going to put in some purple down here. This is a violet actually. And just kind of going on and up here. and just bringing up some of the color. To make it really nice and pop out. And if you think that it's too much color, that it's maybe too much saturation, and you think maybe it's too colorful, goodness, you can always grab a light gray or a mid-tone gray. Excuse me for dropping that and go over it just very, very lightly to kind of bring down the saturation of the color while there's still color there. But it will definitely give some variation and some form to your snow drifts, which is what our goal is. We don't want them to be super flat. And we 
we definitely don't want to leave them white because, well, that's just boring. And they're not actually white. Everything is a reflection of color. This right here is using the light ultramarine. I'm going to bring it up this way a little bit. Using a very, very light hand, very, very light pressure. And I'm going to go up to the light cobalt turquoise. Give it a little bit of a lighter color up here. And this is kind of our central up here, so I'm going to add some, some light hitting this. We'll start off with a little bit of ivory up here. Give it a little bit of a snowy glow. I don't know how much of that you can actually see, but it really does, in person, make your snow kind of come to life. Now you can also go more with that if there's the sun out or whatnot. It can kind of look a little bit more yellow. This one is cream. And it kind of brings out almost this sunniness on top of your snow, which I think looks really great. And can you see I'm using almost the side of my pencil because I'm going very, very lightly on top of this because I just want to get, I just want to kind of brush the page with it and kind of get the color to very gently bloom onto there. Now if I want to bring the level of the color, the tonage of the color down a little bit, I'm going to take this, this is cold gray, that's number four. Let's go with number three. Let's go with number three. And just kind of deepen the shadow over here a little bit. Just to kind of show off where that curve is. That way the color is still there, but we're also showing the depth of that shadow. We can bring that over here as well. Now for a flat place like over here, we've got the uh, all this shadow underneath the trees, which I've already done, based it in violet, and then I went over it with two of the other blues, I believe the sky blue and the light phthalo blue or light thalo yeah, turquoise, light cobalt turquoise, thalo turquoise. And then I'm just going to go over it a little bit in the darker spots where I want right under the tree with the cold gray, just to give it a little bit more depth. And of course you can always go darker or lighter just depending on what you would like to do with it. So, how does that look to you and to your eye? Now, if you're having a hard time with pencil marks or anything like that, always, you know, if you want to use a blender pencil or a blender pen or using odorless mineral spirits or gamosol or anything like that to smooth out your lines or whatnot, you can always do that. It will look great. So we're going to add some more over here. Just a little bit by a little bit. And I think what we're going to do is uh, 
use some more of the violet over here. So I think it's really, really pretty the way that it kind of gives off that very soft look of a shadow. There we go, and um, put some more ivory on top of this one. I'm going to bring this up so that maybe you can see this a little bit better. Just the difference that all the little tiny bits of color make. And that is how I like to color Chanel with all the colors. Uh, over here, under here, like I said, you can always add, you know, little bits of green or something in here if you wanted to, just to show that it's underneath these green trees because it is going to reflect over there, which is wonderful. I'm going to use the sky blue. And of course, leaving some white is always great. It'll just add to it as being the highlight of it all. Add some ivory up here on the top for a little bit of a sun-kissed glow and then maybe some more light cobalt turquoise this is definitely my favorite for doing these it's such a beautiful color and I think it, it well reflects the uh, the idea of the sky. So. I think that for right down here, I want to put in, use the gray kind of bring the tone, give it a little bit of contrast in here to really bring out that shadow. By tone, I mean we're just bringing the um, value of the color down. Value is how dark or how light something is. In case you didn't know. Sometimes I don't know. And there we have it. Because if we use all grays, we don't want our snow to look muddy or plain. And I think using all of the different colors really just brings it to life. And I really love that effect. So, I hope you have enjoyed this coloring tutorial. And I hope that you go and color some snow. You color the heck out of that snow. And all the links and details you will need, especially about this page and about the colors I've used and everything else, will be in the description box. And I'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye.